Hello and welcome back to Pictorial on Relay FM. I'm Quinn Rose. I'm someone who did not go to art school, but today we're talking about art that's also crime. So what are you going to do now, art schools? <laughs> Hi, I'm Betty. Uh, I'm also someone who did not go to art school, but I have been uh, working as a gallery guide at an art museum for the last eight years. We're going to be talking about someone who... I don't know, maybe he doesn't really like art museums or art schools anyway. So I think we're the perfect people to talk about him. Yeah, so today we have an episode all about the mysterious artist Banksy. And I was going to say in my intro, I didn't go to art school and neither did the person we're talking about today. But like, to be fair, no one really (laughs) knows anything about Banksy. So for all we know, he has a PhD in art history. We have no idea. And we don't even know if he's a he, although he probably is. But who knows? I think that's... Like the one thing that people are like pretty established on, but we're not 100% sure could be an elaborate hoax. Exactly. Yeah. So most people out there have at least heard some kind of passing familiarity with the artist known as Banksy. He is a graffiti artist primarily. Um, That's what he is famous for. And he's also famous for the fact that no one knows who he is. Uh, Like we just mentioned, uh, he publicly identifies as a man and has appeared in videos seeming vaguely masculine shaped with his face (laughs) covered um again this could all be a hoax because that that literally could be a different person than the person who's actually the artist here um we don't know anything for sure but basing off of that assumption uh he is a british artist and that's about where biographical information that's known about Banksy stops, um, which actually, I just have to say right up top, I'm extremely impressed that he's remained anonymous. He's been active for decades. I don't know how he's managed to remain anonymous through all of this time, um, but it actually is a pretty cool thing even in itself that no one knows who he is. Yeah, for sure. It, it is quite impressive considering the amount of attention on Banksy and um and I, I do think the anonymity like it, it is definitely a part of it's it's a part of you know what makes him interesting and I think is is a part of the brand maybe and um you know I think similarly to the Gorilla Girls um being anonymous uh, even though there's people suspect uh, identities behind the masks and um you know as well as musical artists and people uh, who are famous who are anonymous is like a lot of times the anonymity itself um, is a part of the interest. I mean, partially because people are just like, ooh, like, I want to know who is it or like who's behind this. Um, But also the fact that, you know, when you don't have a person to attach um, behind the work, there's all kinds of things that you can and cannot do, you know, like you can't criticize someone based on what they look like or who they are. um, When a lot of times that's what people do to like celebrities. So like I I do, I'm like super fascinated by the anonymous aspect of who he is. Absolutely. And I think it, you're completely right in the fact that it is part of the brand and it's part of what has established him as more successful than other street artists is because there is sort of this mystique of, ooh, no one knows who he is. That's so cool. And I, and I think that um, when it started, it definitely was part of this idea of like, I mean, he was doing crimes that's just it like graffiti uh he was graffitiing spaces that he was not legally allowed to paint on and so the anonymity was an important part of protecting his safety so that he wouldn't get arrested and then i I, over time it has developed definitely into not only preserving his identity so he doesn't get arrested but also as part of this grand mystique of a brand that he has there are some or some people think they have ideas of who he is, but again, like it's all disputed. Like I think I I read on uh, probably like Wikipedia or something that he apparently didn't finish school and then has been to prison. But like again, it's not like fully verified. So if you are not familiar with Banksy as an artist. He is known for making pieces that are politically charged, uh, that have very strong political messaging, and tend to take iconography from recognizable things in culture and switching them around somehow. And he does most of this using a stencil drawing graffiti. So he it's not freehand uh, spray paint on walls. It's done with stencils, which allows him to create a very recognizable style very quickly. 
And he also has worked in a lot of other mediums and has done sort of like performance art stunts as well. But the graffiti works that he does in public spaces, on public walls and buildings are definitely what he is still to this day the most known for and continues to do to this day. And some of the things that he's done that is, for example, things that uh, you might recognize would be um, an image of a, a small girl who is reaching her hand up to try to catch a balloon shaped like a heart that's floating away Um, an image of a protester in a mask who appears to be throwing some kind of bomb or explosive but in his hand is actually a is actually a bouquet of flowers rails a lot against capitalism there's like an image of a jesus being a Jesus being crucified, but he's holding shopping bags. <laughs> or like something like uh Ronald McDonald and Mickey Mouse, and in between them they're holding like this poor child whose life has been racked with violence, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, alongside all of <laughs> these kinds of ideas and anti anti capitalist things. Does that about sum it up, do you think? Yeah, that's actually a really good uh, summary as a really good overview of uh, who he who he is or what types of art he creates and um, I so I first heard of Banksy through the documentary or fake documentary uh, that it's sometimes called um, Exit Through the Gift Shop. It was actually assigned to me as a film to watch in school. Um, so I went to design school and I took. Um, art and design history course and our uh, professor assigned us uh, to watch exit through the gift shop I think this was around the time when the movie came out in 2010 so I I watched the movie and the movie wasn't necessarily about Banksy Um, it was a movie that was uh, done by a man named uh, Thierry Guetta Uh, he is a French guy or uh, who was living in Los Angeles and he uh, became obsessed with street art uh, a uh, his cousins is apparently the uh, infamous street artist Invader. And so he kind of started with uh, following his cousin and they eventually discovered other street artists like um, Shepard Ferry and uh, as well as Banksy. Um, and then, you know, the documentary, he kind of just like, is interviewing these uh, street artists. And then, but the funny thing is uh, Banksy ends up th- uh like throughout the film eventually turning the camera back on uh, a theory uh, who becomes a street artist himself he becomes this artist called uh, Mr. Brainwash um, and then Banksy is kind of like now making a documentary about um, Mr. Brainwash and it, it just becomes really interesting how this kind of unfolded some people think that it's not like a real documentary that it was like staged which you know it could very well could have been but um but it's kind of like you know either way it is uh kind of is like a documentary about street art but also about you know their view of the art world about different political um ideas and also like consumerism and uh you know being like brainwashed by all this art um and then of course the uh title of the film is called exit through the gift shop which alludes to the fact that most museums and art galleries they make you walk through the gift shop on your way out so you spend money there um so that you know it's not just about you know appreciating the art it still comes back to capitalism him uh so it anyway so that that was when i first heard about him um which 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 was back in 2010 but um again like you said he's been active for decades and he's done a lot of really interesting work since then as well which i'm sure we'll get into um later on in the episode yeah i don't remember how i first heard of banksy uh i think that he probably has one of the greatest name recognition of any contemporary artist because like he's not only so successful and well known but he sort of is like the representation of all street artists even though there are so many street artists working all across the world i would say he's without a doubt the most famous one um in the english-speaking world like his work is everywhere it it sells for incredibly high prices at art uh, auctions which we'll get to soon um and I would love later down the line to do uh, other episodes about street artists because I love public art um, and in all of its forms. But yeah, I don't remember even remember the first time that I heard of Banksy because I feel like his name is just out there so much and is just sort of like proliferates through society. And this kind of gets at a 
big conversation that I want to have about the man, the artist, the concept of Banksy um, has definitely become very controversial. And there's always been controversy around Banksy, like that was kind of the point. But I feel like that's shifted and that the original sort of discussion around him was, is this even art? This man is a criminal. Graffiti artists are criminals, blah, blah, blah. Which is very interesting because I feel like that was sort of the point. He was supposed to be pushing boundaries, um, rejecting the ideas of capitalism and consumerism, and living on the fringes of society in this way. However, now things have shifted. Banksy is an incredibly successful artist. Um, His pieces have sold at art auctions for millions of dollars. And there have been cases of him, like, trying to really aggressively enforce trademark on his work. There's been cases of him, like... Uh, places where his art has gone up have been like uh, really aggressively preventing his work from being defaced even though it is in self a defacement of the original property and of course there's this whole thing of like people love this guy I mean lots of people in the art world still think he's terrible (laughs) but I mean like incredibly affluent celebrities have Banksy works in their home like art galleries hang his pieces now some authorized some non-authorized he definitely commands a huge level of respect and can demand a huge amount of money for his work, which in a way is the complete opposite of everything that he was originally working towards and the ostensible message of all of his work. And so my question that I want to pose to you in the audience (laughs) for discussion, does his anti-consumerism work hold any value in an age where he has become the person with power? What are your thoughts? My thoughts are complicated (laughs) oh yeah lay (laughs) mommy yeah um this is not an exact parallel but i i'll kind of propose it anyway um a few episodes ago we talked about the uh chinese contemporary artist ai weiwei and um we spent quite a bit of time talking about how he uh smashed song dynasty vases and um he apparently is you know protesting the destruction of chinese cultural heritage but he's protesting it by literally doing the same thing like he's literally destroying the very thing he thinks is wrong to be destroyed so in a way what Banksy has become is like the very thing that he supposedly thinks is wrong with the world and he now has become it or or some people may argue that he has become it um so it's kind of this ironic presentation of what it is it, that seems to be what he's doing similar to what Ai Weiwei was doing um oh, so again like people may look at works like these and go like well that's stupid <laughs> like you know that's stupid that you're just being a hypocrite that you're uh literally or you're being ironic but you know you're you're doing the thing that you think is terrible um I, I think that's that's a part of it. Like that's a part of what it is. I, I think you're also like you're always a hypocrite when you live and are sustained by a capitalist society while you're criticizing capitalism. Um, I don't think it's possible to exist in this society without being a part of it, without being a willing participant, um, even though you're criticizing, you know, everything that's wrong with it. That's a very good point. As The Good Place, the TV show, thoroughly uh, discussed, there is no way to live a completely non-hypocritical life because of (laughs) society. (laughs) Please imagine society with, like, rainbows around it, um, as they say it like that. But... (laughs) My general uh, perception of Banksy, um, to kind of just give it away at the beginning, is that I I think I don't think he necessarily intends on being like you know a critique of uh, capitalism or these political divides in the world and stuff. I I think like his basis is he is trying to question things and we'll get into sort of examples of how like he he wants you to um question you know is is graffiti really art or is it vandalism or is it both and it's kind of complicated you know what is art worth and what's the difference between it being in a museum or on a street like by carving it out of the wall and putting it in a canvas does that change things like i think he wants people to to question things and not just take it at face value um 
so that's why I think like that's why I think it's justifiable to be kind of a hypocrite um, in this way because you know the the goal isn't to say one thing is right or not is to kind of just get get people to be more inquisitive so I think so that's why like I personally think you know he's done a good job of uh, delivering these types of messages like I don't think he's you know a terrible person or um, particularly bad for the art world but other people obviously disagree (laughs) interesting I'll say in terms of my overall thoughts on Banksy is I'm deeply skeptical of him and that's for two reasons one I do think that a lot of his political messaging in his art actually isn't particularly creative. I mean, I actually do think his style is uh, very interesting and I like it. Mm -hmm. And I do think that some of his work is like creative and sends a really striking message. But a lot of it is like, oh, you did Jesus with shopping bags. (laughs) What an inspired image. Like a lot of it is kind of a little bit makes me roll my eyes where I'm like, I don't think this is actually as incisive as you think it is Mm -hmm. so that's part of it and the other part of it is just sort of my general skepticism of someone who still claims to be on the fringes but has very obviously amassed a lot of power and success and the anonymity of Banksy really complicates that because on one hand you can say well like that is him preserving his existence as an anonymous member of society as a member of like this fringe element of society and like his work still is out there in public he still does public art all the time um, and does graffiti pieces that are not authorized his work gets banned his own work like out there gets vandalized all the time and so in that way like he still is definitely true to his roots and his message that he still claims to espouse and so i'm not saying like burn the witch or anything but i do (laughs) i am just like generally skeptical and i'm going to get to a specific example about that um in a moment that i think sort of encapsulates all of his conversation Mm -hmm. he has a quote where he said um in sort of response to like how successful his work has been at some auctions he said i love the way capitalism finds a place even for its enemies (laughs) and i do think that's interesting because like Because on one hand, maybe some of his work has become disingenuous. But on the other hand, like, maybe it's just a matter of that, you know, like, we live in a society. (laughs) Affluent people and capitalism takes the things that it wants. And it's not necessarily his intention. And maybe he's not making it for them. It just has ended up that way. And that doesn't have to detract from the other work that he does. I'm not, like, against him in that way. But, yeah, I do still have the sort of skepticism of him. And I do think that some of the work that he's made, especially in the way that it sort of aged over time, um, whereas, like, at one point it might have been seen as, like, really revolutionary. But now I'm like, yep, consumerism is <laughs> bad. Like, we get it. <laughs> Violence, no good. Yeah. <laughs> that You know, honestly, um, you're not alone in that assessment. I actually, while we were researching this episode, I came across, um, there was a critique in New York Magazine in 2013 after he did his residency um, in New York where he did a bunch of work, um, per- like performances as well as a bunch of graffiti around New York. Um, so the uh, critic, uh, Jerry Saltz, um, he basically, like what he said, very similar to what you said, it's like, oh my God, these political messages are so obvious and just so um, like conventional was the word he used and uh, he calls Banksy a promo man he says Banksy is not an artist Banksy is an act so for sure there are lots of people who kind of share similar views as kind of what you just outlined yeah I I didn't think that I had like the genius take of Banksy <laughs> might be kind of overrated. Yeah, I think people are, th- people are there with me. But what I think is a very interesting microcosm of this whole conversation around Banksy, and I want to get your thoughts on, is, of course, the shredding of his artwork. So very famous incident um, that propelled him even further than where he was, uh, was in 2018. There was a big art auction at Sotheby's, which is this giant art auction house um, in London and one of Banksy's prints was for sale it was of this very famous image probably his most famous image of that little girl reaching for the heart-shaped balloon eventually sold for over a million dollars and the second that they declared that it was sold a shredder went off and half of the painting was shredded so that the the top half it, it just sort of like uh 
just started going down and there was a shredder that was installed inside of the frame and so half of the painting was shredded and the other half was just sort of in the frame over top and th- there's video of it it is kind of amazing to watch the video because all <laughs> of the people there are like ah! yeah <laughs> and there's lots of questions that this raises but sort of the one that i want to get to in terms of this conversation is um is this a genuine criticism of consumerism and like affluent people buying art and the the value of art and all this stuff or was this a publicity stunt to raise Banksy's profile because it did and the original art piece is now valued for twice as much (laughs) as it was before it got shredded because this was such a whole profile incident (laughs) my main thing that makes me very skeptical that this was a publicity stunt Mm-hmm. was that they did not shred the whole painting. Mm-hmm. There has been suggested that it was supposed to and it jammed, but it seems very suspicious to me. <laughs> what do you think about this? Well, I have some thoughts. Um, I just wanted to say correction. It was um, sold for over 1.04 million pounds. Oh, God. So that's, I think, like um, a lot more than $1.4 million. But anyway. It's a lot of money. Uh, but again, now it's valued at more than two million pounds, um, which is definitely a lot of money. So yeah, I I also did hear that uh, it was supposed to be completely shredded, but then it wasn't. Um, this work apparently was made in 2016. And again, it was sold in 2018, like 12 years later. Um, after it got shredded, Banksy posted a video on his Instagram showing like the making of Balloon Girl, uh, which he shows like, you know, the frame how the frame was made and how there was a shredder in it and he did a few like test runs where you see the entire uh drawing or painting getting shredded how it's supposed to work supposedly the video was made in 2016 when they made the work he kind of later said he quoted like picasso uh saying the urge to destroy is also a creative urge um so and I think similar to Exit Through the Gift Shop, how, you know, some people think it was a totally scripted or staged or maybe not totally or partially staged documentary. Um, And a lot of people do think that this particular stunt was staged as well. And um, uh, Sotheby's claims that they didn't know about the shredding. They had no idea until it happened. But a lot of people think it's so doubtful that they nobody knew about it, um, especially the amount of efforts that these auction houses take to like validate the work and inspect and things like that. Um, The fact that like no one knew about this mechanism is quite suspect. Um, So I, I, I don't think it's A leap to say that, you know, uh, Banksy would pull stunts like these or, um, or like stage these things to happen. Um, But I think uh, just like exit through the gift shop, like, I personally don't think there it matters too much whether it was like a complete um, surprise or whether uh, the not jamming or jamming was supposed to happen or not. Um, I, I don't think that matters too much and because I I do think the message of his critique is the more important one and um, again like I, I also think it goes beyond just like the obvious like oh um, you know consumerism and the amount of money arts being sold is so much and all these celebrities with their uh, expensive paintings I, I, I think it was it's more so or some people at least can interpret this as more so like the artist taking back control Uh, because we did, I think we did discuss um, auctions and auction houses a little bit in our art and wealth episode. And um, we didn't touch on this too much, but one of the biggest issues with, uh, with auction houses and with galleries and with uh, just art sales in general is that the artists themselves uh, almost never really see, uh, the bulk of the money like the a lot of it uh are like secondary sales or um they're not being directly sold by the artist or or 
the artist is being represented by a gallery, um, but the gallery is taking like a huge, huge percentage, sometimes more than 50% of uh, what the art is worth, plus like, you know, additional handling fees or whatever. So ultimately, at the end of the day, even if you're somebody who's buying an artwork because you want to support an artist, uh, you probably won't get to um, no matter how much you spend and very little of the money actually goes back to them and so and and because and the art world is so um I don't even really know what words to use but like it's so established that artists uh, can't really penetrate it it's hard for artists themselves to take back control um, in this world and so this is I, I think it's less of a critique just on consumerism in general, but more of a critique on how little power artists themselves have in the art auction and the art sales world. And he is kind of, in a way, going like, you know, I'm the artist, I'm going to um, take back control, I'm going to shred it at this auction house. And if he did intend on shredding it entirely, maybe possibly making it worthless, um, that, you know, is kind of like a big F you to people who are taking literally like money and control away from the artist. Um, obviously, you know, now that it's worth even more is like, again, so ironic. Um, but again, it just shows you maybe in a way, even when the artist is trying to take back control, it kind of backfires on them. Interesting. There are many layers of the interpretation that you can pull from that. And it's hard to tell what was intentional and what was unintentional. As we're having this conversation, I feel like a lot of it has been pointing towards the question of his intent as an artist and whether or not that intent has been genuine or is still genuine um, after he's sort of achieved a level of mainstream acceptance in the art world. And I find that question very interesting um, in terms of like us here discussing him as an artist uh, and as his potential activism. But I also think that it's not necessarily the most important question in the end. And the most important question is like, well, if he's putting work out there that is supposed to make us question things and make us more inquisitive about the world, do we think that he's doing that? Do we think that he's achieving that goal? Yeah, that that's actually quite a, quite a good question. I think um, kind of going back to um, what you had asked earlier, you know, like is was the auction, the shredding um, and and sort of so many other things that he's doing, um, is it to raise his profile? And I, I do think it's possible for him to both be questioning things and bringing things to attention or holding political stances while at the same time having an ego and wanting to boost his uh, recognition or status. I mean, despite the fact that, you know, he's anonymous and seemingly uh, maybe not seeking fame, um, but he could also be, you know, seeking a level of, I guess, not so much fame, but notoriety. Oh, notoriety. Yeah, yeah. That's the right word. That's the word I'm looking for. Yeah. And I, and I just real quick, though, on this point is I feel like I do really think, though, that the idea of like him not being famous doesn't really count anymore when he is one <laughs> of the most famous artists alive. <laughs> yeah, that's because true. Because even though like him walking down the street, people would not recognize him, he still gets to like Google himself, um, <laughs> and there's so much name recognition ad- attached to his brand. Mm-hmm. And I, he's not necessarily out there trying to claim that that's it, but I do think that that is like well, you can't say that anymore. Like Banksy as a as an artist is famous enough that it is you. <laughs> True. Exactly. Um, and sort of back to your question, yeah, of like, is he successful in uh, raising these questions or getting us to think deeper about um, art and value and things like that? You know, definitely a hard question to answer. Um One of the things that um, I've been looking at sort of on this question is uh, he did like a takeover of the uh, Bristol Museum. Uh, I think it was back in 2009. And uh, so, uh, again, he he had a lot of these uh, paintings in gold frames, similar to the gold frame he put the balloon girl in. And uh, one of the pieces that he had in the Bristol Museum show is that this big golden frame and in it are just these two stick figures uh, that look like they're cave paintings and but they have these like comic book speech bubbles and one one 
a sick man says, does anybody actually take this kind of art seriously? And then the other guy says, uh, never underestimate the power of a big gold frame. <laughs> so to kind of say that, like, it's it's taken seriously or seemingly being taken seriously because it's put on a pedestal. It's in a museum. It's in a big, thick gold frame. It's on a stand. Um, and of course, he famously also did these like pranks where he would walk into the Tate or walk into the Louvre and and like stick a picture, a painting he does on the wall and it would stay there for like days or weeks and people don't realize that it's not actually a part of the museum's collection. Um, I think I <laughs> read that like he, he he did this prank where he went into the British Museum and um, he put in rock, I guess, and he did what looks like a cave painting, but it's a man with a shopping trolley and it was it was in the it was in the British Museum yet yeah, for like days before staff realized oh my god this is not supposed to be here and they were like super embarrassed um, but anyway so th it just kind of shows you that like it's take it's being taken seriously because of the context that it's in and you know Banksy is being taken seriously now because of uh, like he's being taken seriously because we we take him seriously <laughs> like it, it's it's like everything else in the world where like if there is value or value exists because we put value in it and we have paid attention to it and we're discussing it but I, I do think it is important and it is important uh, the biggest significance that I see from the work he's doing is he is uh, making connections about uh, like art in and out of the museum like again he's vandalized museums by putting his work in it. He's done, you know, graffiti um, uh, unauthorized on sides of buildings. And of course, like people have been known to like carve it out of the buildings and put it in a frame or sell it um, as an artwork, even though, you know, like, you kind of just like stole it technically. And just kind of going back to a conversation we've had a lot and that I brought a lot is this connection of like higher and low art. And I think people who blur the boundaries of it over, you know, the centuries and like has always interested me. And I, I think it's important to kind of look through um, these lenses of like, you know, why, why does why, why is it important when it's in a building versus out of a building? And should that matter? And again, like, I don't have a good answer to that. And um, I don't think it's possible to, but I think we, um, we do need to question things, because if we didn't, then, you know, in a way, like the establishment will always get to decide what's important and what's not. I think that overall, this is my favorite thing that Banksy's done as an artist was the putting sneaking things into a museum <laughs> yeah. uh, and people on many cases I'm um, not immediately noticing that it wasn't supposed to be there <laughs> yeah just because I find that fascinating uh, and I do think it did make like a genuinely interesting statement about how we place value on art and decide what things end up in museums and all that stuff on this subject though I think that one of the most important conversations to have in that whole realm of uh, value on art and what we let into mainstream art is these ideas of who has been marginalized over history and women and people of color and queer people and et cetera, et cetera, uh, who have been marginalized out of mainstream art museums and art auctions and all of these things. And it's not necessarily his responsibility to like take on all of that. But I do think that in the conversation that he is trying to have about the value that we create with art, that I haven't seen him directly take on those ideas. And I do see that as something that is perhaps missing in his message. I do think that's a good point. And um, that's not necessarily his message and his direction. Um, you know, and as an artist, we can't really, you know, um, it's his decision on what he wants to highlight. I mean, he does some of his work. He has highlighted things like the refugee crisis. Um, there is like a modification of the girl with balloon where I think the uh, girl has a scarf on her head. And uh, he, I believe that one is alluding, you know, to like the Syrian refugee crisis. So he does kind of, he ha does have like a global multicultural perspective in that case. Um, but yeah, like it, it is, like it, it is still uh, kind of 
like you mentioned before, like a lot of his stuff is quite obvious and um, he's not really breaking new ground. And, and maybe that's a part of why, like, you know, some people are not huge fans, but not because they hate him, more so because they just don't think he's doing anything that's like super uh, important in, I guess, 2020 now. I feel like there's a lot that I what I am faced with Banksy's work that I want to hold him to that I don't necessarily I'm, I'm not like well every person needs to be like so responsible for all these ideas or whatever <laughs> but it's like when that is such a big part of your entire body of work both in terms of like the general political messaging that he is focusing on and this idea of like tackling on the mainstream art world and how is he doing that and all this stuff and I feel like well okay but like kind of this the question of like is your money where your mouth is and that is hard to define with someone like Banksy since uh, we don't know who he is, so we don't know what he's doing with his money necessarily. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So for all I know, he is like a, a, a gives away everything he gets um, <laughs> to the causes that speak to him and that are represented in his art. Like he could be awesome, uh, and we don't actually know that. Uh, so I don't. I'm not trying to like criticize him too harshly. These are just the things that I am struck by when consuming his art and trying to see like, do I see a completely consistent message here in terms of all of the things that you are making in your art as well as the things that you are doing um, around that and in your life. And I'm not sure I do see that total consistency, um, but we also don't have the full picture. So I can't say for sure one way or the other. Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, one thing he probably does do with his money is create like more art and bigger and bigger forms of art. Um, Like I I do want to kind of talk about like a slight side note or tangent. Um, I I guess like one of the reasons I like personally like quote unquote like him or like his work or just find it interesting is because some of it is just kind of hilarious and a particular thing that I really enjoyed was in 2015 I believe he uh, built Dismaland in um, like a seaside British town um, or it's like a seaside resort but or, or more like a former seaside resort that's probably now like derelict and nobody goes there um, and he he basically made a apocalyptic Disneyland and it has like you know like the Disney castle but it's like falling apart um, there's like rides and stuff but they're all kind of like sketchy and then you play these um, amusement park games but they're like super unfair or like you know unwinnable like there's like a uh, topple and anvil with a ping pong ball and and yeah like he and and he he got like other artists to participate and make stuff for for the uh, Disneyland as well um, and yeah there's like a terrifying carousel where it looks like it comes out of a horror movie and then there's like a there was a stormtrooper that was walking around but he, he was like completely miserable and what I find funny is apparently the employees who worked in Disneyland were just like disgruntled and totally unhelpful kind of like Walmart employees and they're just just rude to you and stuff like that I mean I I I really wish I could have gone there but obviously you know it's all the way in England and I couldn't I wasn't able to get there in 2015 um but like I think that's just an example of like you know obviously there could be like messages in there you know criticizing Disneyland and shiny happiness of it but I think in a way it's just kind of like that just an example of something that's kind of fun and um the the message or whatever he's trying to convey for me in that particular example is kind of secondary um and and the just you know the part that he is doing something that's like amusing i enjoy it as a part of that um uh like you know like all people like all artists you know like not everyone's perfect and um and he definitely isn't (laughs) um but I do think he creates things that are fascinating and or if not just kind of fun to observe Disneyland did look super interesting (laughs) yeah I also wish I could have seen that in person I mean that that's such a large scale thing to create and it seemed like it was something that a lot of design thought went into and all these different elements of it uh, from actors to tiny little elements that went through the whole thing I don't know it did seem really cool and just sort of it as a piece in its own artistic merit regardless of the political messaging of it was like oh this is something that took a really long time to make and a lot of work went into and that is cool in itself yeah for sure so um yeah like I I think he is 
a kind of as I said in the beginning like quite complex and like the answer to some of his questions are not very clear and um, you know equally complex and I, I think I definitely understand like uh, some of the criticisms um, you know specifically like the ones you had mentioned um, like I do I do think I, I kind of I, I definitely see that and but I do think like some stuff like yeah like he couldn't really help again like a lot of his works are sold uh not necessarily authorized by him and they were like probably like stolen or um carved out of a wall or something um and the fact that you know famous people buying his work um he can't really help that and and he may may not even have seen a lot of uh the money that was uh acquired (laughs) through these transactions himself i i do think it just goes back to um like the particular reason why i brought up you know that gold frame painting and the stick figure asking does anyone take this art seriously um is maybe in a way like we shouldn't take art too seriously whether it's in a museum in an auction house or on the street um maybe it is a lot of it is just for fun i i do talk about that quite a bit and um Banksy's work and street art in general does remind me a lot of pop art and when I'm in the gallery um, that I work in we have a lot of pop art pieces and um, you know a lot of them are kind of just uh, nonsensical or um, doesn't seem to have a meaning to it and I kind of just tell people that you know like don't take this too seriously maybe pop art or maybe this type of art is supposed to just be funny and humorous you know just like you're watching a movie it and doesn't necessarily have to have deep meaning it's just there to entertain you maybe we should all stop taking art so seriously very well said (laughs) real quick on your point of people buying his art for really expensive prices i do want to say that i did read an account where he would sell art for really cheaply um and then would later be resold for like hundreds of thousands of dollars so that definitely was something that happened as well that all of those high value art sales um, were not necessarily all going to him. Mm -hmm. I will say I'm not sure I totally agree with your point about not taking it so seriously. I mean, I do think we should take it less seriously. I don't (laughs) necessarily think that that's his message because I do think that he, uh, with all, most of his stuff is like very politically oriented. And I uh, do get the impression that he takes himself very seriously. (laughs) And I think that is kind of what ultimately rubs me the wrong way about Banksy in in some regards is that he does seem like he takes himself very seriously and I do think that he tends to have a pretty high opinion of his own art and the old his own uh, messaging specifically that he's putting out into the world and it's not that I disagree with his messages and I not th- it's not that I think his art is bad it's not that I don't think it has merit but I do think that sometimes it appeals to this part of our brain that likes to uh, think that we're doing activism or making a difference by having a clever idea or like by tweeting a joke that makes <laughs> fun of someone that uh, makes fun of like a bad politician or something but then we ultimately don't do anything like <laughs> yeah yes we live in a society and <laughs> we can't we can't stop that and we are all like inherently hypocritical by living among other humans in a capitalist society <laughs> totally there with you but i just hope that for him himself and that for everyone who consumes his art like absolutely like enjoy his art i do think that the style is really cool and that it has a lot of value but it's not enough to just come up with the clever pun and make it into an art piece like you have to actually go out there and do the activism to stop those things from happening like Mm-hmm. raising awareness through these kinds of images is a form of activism but it is step one it is not the last step <laughs> and so yeah like I like a lot of this stuff uh not all of it but I like a lot of it and I just hope that uh for the man personally um and <laughs> all of us that we remember that it's just like one really small piece of the puzzle and like you said you know Let's not take it that seriously. (laughs) And, you know, let's hope he's donating all of his proceeds to solving these problems that he's taken a stand against. Um, So, you know, you never know. He could be donating everything to like refugees or something. Yeah, absolutely. We don't know. (laughs) Um, But you you can support these things you believe in if you want to take action. (laughs) Yeah. Everyone should be, you know, supporting what they believe in. And if you make it your whole career and brand, you definitely should. (laughs) That's right. Well, thanks so much uh, for having 
I don't usually uh I don't usually thank you at the end of the episodes, I think, but this was really interesting. So thanks oh. so much for talking this out with me. Oh, thank you. I, I, I should thank you more for talking <laughs> about this stuff with me. <laughs> and thanks, everybody out there for listening. Uh, you can find our show notes at relay.fm slash pictorial and find us on Twitter, Instagram at pictorial pod. On Instagram, we'll post a bunch of images of stuff that Banksy's made, both stuff that we've talked about and probably some other stuff I'll throw in there, too. So you can take a look. And if you want to, you can find me on Twitter, Instagram at AspiringRobotFM. And you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at ArticulationsV. And I'm also on YouTube as Articulations. And speaking of YouTube, uh, we do also upload these podcasts as video form uh, on YouTube, where we will insert in pictures throughout the episode of what we are talking about. And then um, I don't believe we've mentioned this uh, recently. We also have a Google form in our show notes where you can suggest ideas for future episodes. Thanks for listening, art enthusiasts.